Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Hanisa Dina Binti Johari and I will further explain on the packaging protocol. So first, let's take a look at the function of packaging. A pharmaceutical pack contains, protect and deliver a safe and efficacious drug product. At the same time, it provides identification and information that will enable patient compliance and convenience. The primary pack, which is in direct contact with the product during storage and delivery, contains the product while the secondary pack contains the primary pack as well as ancillary components such as dispensing spoons and information leaflets. Since the primary pack is in direct contact with the ointment, it must be compatible with the product and should not reduce or add anything to the product. For example, the ointment should not adsorb or absorb onto the primary pack as this would reduce the product potency. Besides, as the primary pack, the material should enable product stability as well as provide protection to the product from biological hazards like microorganisms and atmospheric factors such as light, moisture and carbon dioxide. Secondary pack also contribute to the protection against atmospheric factors to a certain extent, although their major role is to provide protection against mechanical hazards like shock, abrasions and puncture during handling, storage and transport. So first, let's take a look at this product's primary and secondary packaging. The first step in the packaging process is the selection of the primary packaging material which takes into account various factors such as dosage form, the route of administration, as well as the need of terminal sterilization. As it is semi-solid, the ointment needs to be able to be dispensed from the container under slight pressure, for example, with a squeeze, for example, with a squeezing of a tube. This is why collapsible ophthalmic ointment tubes is suitable for this product. As for the material, thin tube or thin coated tubes are suitable because they are resistant to corrosion. Thin is also compatible with a wide range of drugs in petroleum based ointments. Another alternative material that can be used is flexible fl plastic. Is flexible plastic, such as flexible low density polyethylene LDPE or polypropylene resins. However, because the ointment is sensitive to sunlight, opacifying agents such as titanium oxide needs to be added to the translucent plastic material. The ideal closure should be able to properly seal the container and prevent product loss. They should also be non-reactive and user-friendly so that they can be easily removed and replaced after use. There are many closure types that are suitable for eye ointment, namely the bung type push-on, screw cap, as well as the fusion closure type. However, screw cap closure seems to be more preferred because it is easy to be used. As for the material, iron is suitable to be used as both the screw cap and to fabricate the drums. Apart from iron, polyethylene and polypropylene are also suitable materials that can be used for the screw cap. Collapsible paper cartons laminated with a thin layer of plastic are usually used as the secondary packaging. In addition, the thin layer of plastic provides a waterproof property to the secondary packaging up to a certain extent. The important labels that should be on the secondary packaging includes the expiry date, rule of administration, warning, storage requirement labels, presence or absence of preservatives, as well as name and the concentration of the active ingredients. As for the tests carried out, due to time constraint, I will only briefly explain on the tests carried out. Firstly, the leakage test evaluates the intactness of the ointment tube and its seal. Then ointment tubes will be selected and the exterior surface will be cleaned. After that, they will be horizontally placed over absorbent blotting paper and together with the absorbent blotting paper, they will be placed into oven maintained at 60 plus minus 3 degrees Celsius for 8 hours and then the leakage is observed. On the other hand, the presence of metal particles from the packaging material can irritate the cornea or conjunctiva of the eye. So it is very important for the metal particle test to be done. To perform this test, we will completely remove the contents of 10 tubes of the ointment and we'll put them into separate petri dishes. Then we will heat these petri dishes at 85 degrees Celsius for 2 hours before cooling them at room temperature. Then we observe the petri dish for metal particles using a microscope. 